So as far as kind of what I would say, what distribution engineering is all about or distribution systems engineering is all about, um, basically, I kind of break that down into, I guess, what I would call like planning versus design versus operations versus asset management. So planning, what planners are doing is they're, they're kind of looking ahead in the future and they want to make sure their distribution systems are going to hold up, right? Um, they're looking at load growth. They're looking at new loads and they're trying to figure out well, where do new facilities need to go? Where do substations need to go? Where do primary feeders need to go? And things like along those lines, right? So they're, they're kind of looking probably five to 30 years off in the future. The other thing where planning comes into play is if somebody wants to install some distributed generation, well, that's got to coordinate with the existing system and the existing loads. And so there's actually planning studies that have to go on as far as whether we can add a certain amount of distributed generation at certain sites in our distribution system. And so what we're going to be focused on a lot is the type of analysis that's needed for this planning purpose. Um, design, um, that's another aspect of distribution. You're kind of developing standards for your line layout and the sizes of transformers that you use and things like that, which many utilities put into the design handbook. You're trying to figure out whether a new piece of equipment is something you can add to your system. And the thing you have to keep in mind is once this equipment's put out in the field, it, it may need to last for like 40 years. And so you just don't want to get the latest from a, a manufacturer and put it out there because if it breaks, it, it's kind of a wasted investment, right? And so people on the design side are kind of looking at how they build their lines to hold up to ice storms and hurricanes. And if something new comes out there, they spend a lot of time actually testing and evaluating it before they, they integrate it in. Another aspect of distribution engineering is the operation of the circuit in real time. Um, you have to make sure you have the right protection settings in your relays that um, control the circuit breakers. You have control settings for your voltage regulators and your capacitor banks. And so it, you have to kind of stay on top of that. And the other thing that's going to happen is you might have customers complain about voltage levels not being correct. There might be weird things going on with service. And so then you have to kind of monitor your circuits in real time and, and make sure there's nothing abnormal going on. And then finally, there's, I guess, what I would call the asset management component, where you have to make sure that you don't let the system decay so much that you can't keep it up and running with the proper reliability. So if you're driving around Raleigh and especially around the campus area, you got to be, you, you got to be considering that a lot of those circuits that were built were probably built like in the sixties, 1960s or seventies. So a lot of that stuff you see out in the field is going to be maybe over 50 years old or certainly within the 30 to 50 year time frame, And these components do eventually wear out. And so something else you have to be thinking about is how do you manage this? Um, do you go out and replace things every so often or do you wait till they wear down to a certain point and replace them? Because you're not going to have budget to replace everything all in the same year. You only have to space this out. So that's kind of another aspect of distribution that a lot of people don't think about is that you have to be able to manage your, your assets and you got to make sure that you don't leave things to the point where somebody in the future has to basically rebuild everything at the same time. And so the decisions have to be made about that as well. Um, so anyway, if, if you're working in industry, if you're working in distribution, you're going to probably find yourself in one of these types of categories right here. And basically what this class is about is giving you the analytical background to understand the modeling that's needed to kind of figure out, well, if this voltage is going to get too low, is current going to get too high, right? We'll be using computer tools uh, quite extensively to do this analysis. Um, the thing of it is, once you get above a maybe like five circuit elements, it's hard to do this stuff by hand anymore. You need to have computer programs for this. Um, one tool that a lot of utilities use is a, is a tool from a Eaton um, called Sim Simdist, and 
this is based on a lot of different acquisitions. There's actually a company called Sime at one time, but they've gone through like two acquisitions. And now this is owned by Eaton, which is a large um, electrical components company. But what you have here is, again, you have a model for your circuit. You basically see all the, the, the geographic information about the system. And then what you can do is you can then take some measurements at the top of the circuit and you could figure out like what's the voltage profile up and down this circuit what are the current flows and power flows and things like that and then if you see any potential for under voltage or overloads and this could be flagged in the study so the reason i'm mentioning this particular program this is probably used by the bulk of large utilities in the united states like duke energy now smaller utilities uh, typically use lower cost programs for this analysis. And this is the one we're gonna be using this semester from a company called Millsoft called Windmill. And so similar sort of a setup where you have the geographic information about your system. You, you, I'll show you later on, I'll be spending a lot of time showing you different aspects of this program, but the same way as if this is the substation and these are all the three phase lines and the single phase lines, then we could, um, we could hit the analysis button and then basically we could see the voltage drops and the power flows and things like that. So this is another common tool. And then one we'll be using for distributed generation is a tool from Electric Power Research Institute. This is more of a research organization called OpenDSS. This is for distribution system simulator. This is a little bit more of a script-based tool. It doesn't have a GUI, but this is a little bit more of a super user's tool. And then if I have a time varying profile for load for how my load changes with time over 24 hours, then what I can do is I can actually run this analysis for each of the time points and combine everything together. So this is very useful if I have intermittent distributed generation that doesn't have a constant output. And then I can, I can model this in this type of program. So anyway, as far as what you'll got, what you guys are going to probably be seeing when you graduate, you can go start working somewhere. Is this this push for more renewable distributed generation, the distribution level still going to occur? Um, in Hawaii, we're at 100 percent, but we're not near that level in other locations, in the United States. And so this is still going to be growing and we're still going to have to be dealing with how we can integrate more DER into our system. The, the other thing we're going to see more of too is integration of microgrids. And, and the thing that differs about microgrids is they have what are called grid forming systems that could actually support voltage directly. And so current PV is what we call grid following. It can't support voltage, but the new types of inverters we're putting out there can. And so we'll talk about this more to the end of the semester. Um, the thing you're also going to see, too, is you're going to see the impact of the drop of energy storage prices. And so you all aware of companies like Tesla and they're, and they're building battery, they're building a battery plant and they're trying to get the level of uh, lithium ion battery per kilowatt hour down. Uh, this is going to have an impact on you as well. So if these prices of energy storage start dropping, say, below $100 per kilowatt hour. This is going to be more of a tool you're going to use in conjunction with distributed generation. Uh, grid modernization is going to be something you're going to run into. Um, basically, there's a lot of old infrastructure out there, and at some point, it's all going to have to be replaced. And so the question is going to be, do you replace it with the same thing or you replace it with something different? And there's a lot of talk now about building larger wire, using larger wire sizes, because if we're going to put generation out there, then that's going to help if we can have larger pipes or larger wires to carry this distributed generation. Um, and then also, too, we're increasingly becoming dependent on the reliability of power. You know, a lot of you guys, if you lose electricity and your router goes down and you, you can't play your computer games or use your maybe some of your desktop computers, you kind of feel like you, 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 know, you can't really get anything done without power anymore. And so we're, we're much, much more re, um, re, um, dependent on high reliability electricity, and we got to make sure our, our distribution systems are, are up to par for that. And then, as I mentioned before, we're, 
grid cybersecurity is going to probably get worse. Uh, and then we're probably going to see more severe weather events or the impact of severe weather events. Um, we'll see also, too, um, and this is going to take a while, the, the impact of electric vehicles. Um, Households, maybe not as much, you know, for residential systems, but the big impact is going to be if you have some um, commercial customers on distribution, they decide to convert all their trucks to electric or a city converts all their buses to electric or some company that has a car fleet converts all their vehicles to electric. That's going to add huge amounts of spot load to distribution in, in the order of megawatts and even conceivably overload substations. And so that's going to have a big impact. And then also too, there's going to be this push for a lower carbon future, which means we're going to try to put more renewables at the distribution level in order to cut the greenhouse gases. And so this is all stuff I think you guys are aware of right now. Um, but, the, you know, if I'm going to talk about what's going to be the, the landscape in say like 2031, you know, I'm sure a lot of this stuff's going to relate to what's going to happen between now and and then right so anyway this just kind of shows you know how this is going to progress if i took my t and d diagram you know what we're going to see is we're going to see more bulk generation be renewable based we're going to see more of this at the um the distribution level as well we're seeing a little bit of this now but this is going to continue to increase and we're going to be seeing probably a lot of feeders are going to be above 100% as far as renewable 